Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I'm going to be showing you how I protect my rare hardback first editions uh, in these lovely plastic sleeves uh, to make the uh, the dust wrappers really pop and uh, also to give them long-term protection. So a lot of people find it quite difficult to actually uh, create these plastic sleeves and uh, well that's what we'll be having a look at today. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay then, so I think the best way to go about this is to actually look at a book that's already been done. So this is uh, a copy of Flashman, fantastic uh, uh, first in a series of books by uh, George MacDonald Fraser, one that I'm very much a fan of. And this was the, the first book in the series, so it is uh, quite an expensive uh, little collectible, this one nowadays. But if we look at the dust wrapper, This particular copy was actually in very, very nice condition when I got it. Um, so it didn't really need, um, it wasn't too difficult to, to uh, actually protect. Uh, the more sort of chipped and you know, certainly along the edges, if the books are chipped and that, or the dust wrappers are chipped, it can make them a little bit tricky to, uh, to wrap up. But that's what they look at, look like unfolded. But when you look at it the other way around, you'll see what we've actually done. And this is the very first one I did. So. I've got the dust wrapper flat and I've put it against the sheet of this uh, this plastic material here and then cut it out and then literally just folded it over. So that's what we're going to be looking at doing today. So I've got a couple of hardbacks that need the treatment. They've both got dust wrappers that need protecting. Um, they're both fairly vintage. So they do warrant they do warrant uh, having a little look at. So that's what we're going to be having. A, you know, that's that's basically what we're aiming to do. And obviously, then they'll give these books a really nice. Uh, they'll protect the dust wrappers, and uh, and it also sort of brings them out as well. This sort of plastic plastic covering there. So uh, let us have a look. And um, at the at the two new ones, uh, here's another one actually that I did earlier, which was the Wasp Factory. A nice first of that one, and it does even work. Obviously, you can do it on the. Uh, Big thick books. Here's a copy of Red Mars, which is a huge, huge book, and this one's uh, got the same sort of treatment as well. Um, so you see the same principle. We're just going to lay the dust wrapper down flat, and then fold it over and put it back into into situ onto the book. So, so the first book we're going to be having a look at doing is this copy of Colonel Sun. Now it's certainly not in the best of conditions. It's got um, the dust wrapper has got like. A, you can see it's got like a closed tear there, which is not great. It's been price clipped. It is, however, a first edition and it is scarce. And uh, uh, although I don't collect the Fleming books in first edition or the James Bond books per se, um, this particular one uh, is by Kingsley Amis, Robert Markham, who I do actually collect. So uh, this is actually part of my Kingsley Amis collection rather than anything else. So I've taken the book out of its uh, wrapper initially. And this is what we've got to play with. And it's, you can just see it's in a real sorry old state. And it's the sort of book that without careful um, attention, it could get much, much worse. So you can see here, it's got a split there. There's, there's wear along the bottom of the spine there. There's that tear on the spine there. Numerous little creases, dinks, and, and it's just not looking great. So it's going to be a bit of a job to get this into protective wrapper, but the principle is exactly as we've been doing in the past. So um, what we're going to do, the actual plastic comes in, in one of these rolls here like this, and this is how you buy it. And it's, it, you can get it in like different meters, like 50 meters of it or 25 meters. Um, it's going to last a long time. So if we unroll it, like so, now I'm going to pop my copy of the Wasp Factory on the end there, just to stop the paper from rolling too badly. 
gonna unroll it here. And we're gonna pop our dust wrapper down and get an idea of the actual size that we need here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So, I think what we'll do, I'll just pull the camera out a little bit, just so we can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so you can see that the dust wrapper is clearly in situ there. Okay, and I've got it right in the middle of the uh, of the sheeting. Now, we don't want too big a fold at the end. So I'm moving it up to about, about there where I'd like it to be, like so. And I think that's a pretty good spot where we're gonna to need to uh, give it a trim. So I've got some quite sharp scissors here. Just gonna roll that in a little bit and I'm gonna lift it up ever so slightly. It's always good to do it on a, like a card flat surface. Don't try and do this on like a tablecloth or anything. And I'm just gonna create a little cut along here as straight as I possibly can. And this should be pretty much from the off the correct size to fit this particular dust wrapper. So there we are. So I'll pop that to one side. And there we are. It's actually uh, looks just about spot on that piece there. Like so. So now what we want to do, if we're confident that everything is as flat as we can get it, is turn it over like this. And we want to get it as in the middle as possible. So it looks like it's about as good as we're going to get it. Now this is where it gets a bit fiddly. So what I do, I grab a ruler and I basically, I sort of, this gives me an idea of exactly the dimensions that I need and I fold this up like so against the ruler. You see, I'm making sure that I'm not making any damage at all. And I quite lightly put a, a gentle crease in initially, just enough to sort of show me where I need to fold this. So it's not gonna pang out like that. And then I'm just gonna pull the dust wrapper out like that. And because I've already got that crease in, I can actually put a bit more pressure on it now because I know exactly where the crease needed to be. Like so. There we are. So that's the first one done. So you can almost, if you want, you can slip it back in here. Like this. You can see that that is nice and tight. Now the thing is, it needs to be permanently down like this. So I'm gonna grab a, my copy of Wasp Factory, like so and my copy of Flashman, like so. Because if you, if you look, that's as, as low down as we possibly can make it. So it's in, a, it's in the spot on position. But what we do need to do is just turn it around this way. So we can do the bottom part. So let's get my weights again. So we got Wasp Factory up there. There we are. And Flashman and that's simply holding it in position so that we can do this edge along here. So once again, the actual dust wrapper itself is as good and as flat as I've been able to make it. Um, you know, there's a few little tears and things like that, but that's exactly what this plastic sheeting is going to protect. So it's gonna be the same way again. I've got my ruler, like so. And we're just initially going to fold it against the ruler just to get a, 
a gentle crease, like a rough idea of where we want the plastic sheeting to fold down. So we know pretty much where it needs to be. And we'll get rid of the ruler. We're just creasing it to the edge here. It needs to be a millimetre or so out just to give the, the dust wrapper a tiny bit of um, leeway for when the book is opening and closing. And there we are, so that's absolutely fine. Now we're going to be looking at the edge edges here. So if we look at this right hand edge first of all, you can see that that just needs folding over and that's going to be absolutely fine. However, the last book I did was a big huge uh, hardback and my actual cutting was a bit wonky. So what I'm going to do, because I don't really want it like that, I'm just going to tidy this up ever so slightly um, by giving that one a bit of a trim. So it's going to be easier from the other way around. Just because it will look a little bit neater once it's finished. There we are. So the bit I'm going to try and trim, you see it's just a bit uneven there. So I'm just going to sort that bit out. There we go. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so the very last bit then that we need to do is to fold this edge over. Now, if we're absolutely happy that that's as good as we're gonna be able to get the top and bottom, then it's just these two edges here that need to come over. So once again, it's the same principle. I've got my ruler in there to give it a nice sharp edge. I just wanna get this over as best we possibly can. And that's sort of scored it so that we can then go in and put a really strong crease in there to make it as permanent as possible. And there we are, so just keep that one like that. And we need to do it for the other side as well. the same so you can see exactly what needs to be done this bit here needs to fold over so I've just cut it to the edge there so my sort of rough my rough crease and then my proper crease there, putting all my weight on, like so. So that's pretty much it. Now you don't need to tape these bits down. Some people do, I tend not to. I just think it's gonna make it difficult to have the books out, all right? But as I said, some people, they like to tape theirs down and really keep the book in place. The best thing you can do to keep the dust wrapper on now is we put the book back on and then we need to sort of keep it pressed and in situ under a big pile of other books until the folds really take effect. Because it will take a little bit of time for them to sit properly, particularly on a smallish book such as this one. It's not exactly got hundreds of pages to keep it in, in position, you know? rippling here. Let's do that again because that was starting to ripple there and we don't want that to happen. 
that generally just means it's not quite in position. So let's just try that again. That looks about right. It will just take a little bit of centering and you will find this, that when you first put it on, there's like little bits of air in that trapped inside. So you do need to be careful to try and avoid that particularly with a, a delicate wrapper such as this one. So this one sort of needs to go on initially like that, so it's wrapped around properly. So I would say that this one here needs to go on just a tiny bit further around like that. Once you've done this the once and you've got it in the absolutely perfect spot, you'll be fine. So there we are, that's Colonel Sun all sort of wrapped up in its uh, protective sleeve there. And it's about as good as you would expect for a wrapper, which you know, certainly had its uh, imperfections and stuff. So what I will do long term with that one, um, I will put it, because you see it's got a bit of spring in it, and it's just because the plastic sheeting is still like finding its home. I would put a load more books on top of that. So it really, really presses it, it down over the next sort of, uh, month or so and then it will be absolutely fine and ready to uh, ready to join the collection of uh, first editions really nice uh, interesting book that and uh, great cover there by uh, Tom Adams so there we are that's the first one done I have actually got another one to do so uh, let me go and get that one so the next book I've got to cover is actually another another one in the Flashman series, uh, Flashman and the Mountain of Light. Now this one I believe was uh, a 1980s uh, one, oh actually 1990, just on the cusp, so 1990, and it's got a great dust jacket again, which um, definitely needs protecting. The Flashman jackets are particularly susceptible for the spines to be fading, so uh, they do make them very difficult to find. Uh, they're really nice, perfect copies. So. This one isn't bad at all. It's got a little bit of wear, but it's about as good as um, you know you can reasonably expect to find. Um, so I'm just going to use exactly the same sort of uh, process as we did last time. So I've got my uh, my roll of uh, plastic cover in here. I'll put that right to the end. It's nowhere near as uh, springy as it used to be, and. Uh, to get an idea of the size, it's going to need to be, because don't forget the wrapper needs to be flat, so it needs to be pretty much to about there. So I'll just grab this copy of the book and I'm going to cut up to that point there. In as straight a line as I can manage. Once again, we're going to use our trusty ruler because it's pretty much centered as it is. We shall use this as a guide. Looks like that bit needs a bit more weight over there, so we'll just pop that on so the dust wrapper is completely flat. Now, because this is a much more recent book, it should, in theory, be a bit easier to uh, put a sleeve on. It's also nowhere near as rough condition as the copy of Colonel Sun that we've just done. So I'm just using the ruler to get that. as I can. Then I'm going to pop my much firmer crease in there, like that. And that's pretty good. Let's lift that one up. Yeah, that's going to sit you. Now we're going to turn it around the other way. And 
needs to be flat first of all. Okay, so that's the top end in flat. I'm just pushing it right up to the edge of where we've just done. I'm using these other books as little paperweights to keep them in place. There we are. So that's in a good situation now. So we're all set to do exactly the same thing again. I said it's not an exact science, it's absolutely fine. As I said, it probably would be good if you give yourself a few millimetres either side of any of these creases just to allow the book a little bit of room to uh, to breathe as and when you're opening and closing it rather than being dead tight. Um, so don't worry if you're not exactly on the edge here because it's not really going to make too much, too much difference here. I don't know about you but when I read a rare first edition, which I do sometimes, um, I generally take the dust wrapper off and put it safely to one side because I don't want to uh, to damage it. So there we are, that's the cover is done. So I'll take that out. Turn it around the other way because we need to do the edges now. So there we are, so you can see it's a nice sort of little pocket there, it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. We just need to do these two end end pieces. So once again, I'm gonna just use that to weight it and use that to weight it there. We'll slide it over there so we can have a good look at doing this. Now this edge is, unlike the other one, this one looks absolutely fine, to be honest. It's nice, it's fairly straight. But as I said, don't worry, it's not an exact science. We're not sending men to the moon here. We are just putting a book sleeve on. done my like rough crease and I should be able to put a bit more permanent one in there like so yeah that wasn't too too much of a chore now I'm going to flip around and do the other one that one can stay flat while we're waiting to do it. There we are. This one's a little bit more uneven, but nothing to really worry about. So I'm just going to fold it over. I don't really think I even need the ruler on this one. It's not too difficult at all. Pretty much the dust wrapper on now. Now the final thing is to uh, get the book in position. So put the spine on initially, and we need to allow for that first bit. So it is. It does take a little bit of trial and error this to get it just right. So the spine is centered properly. That one actually it seems to have come up a little bit better than the last one. I think simply because the book is bigger, it's a thicker book. And this is a few, few hundred pages more than what we were looking at. So let's just get that leveled up. Yeah, so this one's pretty much right from the off. It's just landed just perfect. So the title and the spine there are in the middle of the book. really nice and it has given it that extra sort of bounce because the uh, there's all that plastic underneath there folded over but as I said don't let that worry you because all you need to do is put some heavy books on and leave them there over the next month or so and really let that sort of sink in 
and your books will be looking absolutely spanking and they will be very very well protected so there we are i hope you have found that really really useful now i will link to this particular form of uh, plastic book protection it's, it's a specialist product um, and it's not that easy to find so um, i've put some links for you to be able to get it yourself in the description down below if you have enjoyed today's video do please give it a thumbs up do consider subscribing for regular book related content i've got lots on the channel vintage paperbacks and book cleaning videos as well and uh, i look forward to seeing you again very soon bye <laughs>